evolution is dead. Long live the creator. I'll tell you why. And I'm saying science says that as a scientist. Uh, evolution is dead because there's such thing as the minimal gene set concept. They've taken a mycoplasma, smallest organism, mycoplasma genitalium, which is the smallest organism that is known to exist, has 468 genes. A gene is a mix of uh, proteins, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it can be 1,000, can be 10,000 amino acids. Okay, they're 486, and they've decided since year 2000, they said, let's take them, let's try to reduce it. Because we have to start, if you're going to be an evolutionist, you have to start with zero genes and build up if you're going to go from hydrogen to human. And so, somewhere along the way, they said, well, let's take it down. In the year 2000, they published that even on paper, they couldn't go below uh, 200 genes. In, on the 6th of January 2006, in Nature, they published that in reality, you could only go down to 397 genes. Uh, it's sort of like a car. You, see, you have a car, you can take off the bumper, but you can't take out the motor. So, so, so a cell, which is where my specialty lies in my, my uh, scientific work, a cell needs a specific number of components to be functional. You have a membrane, but then you need to feed the membrane. So you have to have some mitochondria. You need a way of tagging the proteins. You need some DNA. So you need 397 things. Just the glucose cycle for getting en energy takes over six different genes. So if you don't have one of them, you don't have any more energy coming to the cell. So we have 397 genes. So you have to go from zero to 397 in one shot for the simplest cell. There is no reductionist ability to go below that. So you, when, when we talk about, it's, it's, not, it's not religious to say a computer is created. That's not a religious statement. Saying who has created it might be. But saying a, a computer is created is not a religious statement. We have things. This is where uh, Lawrence has unleashed his uh, key uh, 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 argument here. And, and in this uh, thing that he talks about uh, debating evolutionists and never losing, mm -hmm. he always goes straight to origin of life. And what he does with that is he says, okay, here we're going to talk about something that has to do with the origin of life. At some point, this evolutionist, uh, which I don't really like that word, um, is going to say something about science not knowing everything about the origin of life. And he goes back and says, ha ha, the evolutionist has said they don't know everything about the origin of life. And so so tell me the origin of anything. How about an insect without wings getting to an insect with wings? Come on, origin of anything, eyes, ears, nose, anything. Lawrence, now you're talking about the origin of life. Now the origin of life, has nothing, uh, the, the fact that science doesn't know everything about the origin of life does not mean that all of that evolution that we do know quite a bit about from the fossil record, from genetic uh, information, from comparative anatomy. You can't get the origin of anything genetically, Jason. You can't yes, get the origin of you anything. Can. You've got two processes. You've got natural selection, which isn't even functional before the first cell. You've got mutations, but you don't have any genetic code to mutate. So you've got to go from that zero to 397. It's not something that's going to be discovered. It's something we know. If you take a computer, we know it's been created. If you take a chair, we know. It's not because I don't know something. It's because I know something. I'm a creationist. Everything that has information and is complex has to have been created. That's not true at all. Um, so here's, here's, here's where we want to go with this. Um, now, first of all, you're making that leap right into faith. Right? As a matter of fact, you're taking the faith and then trying to leap it onto everything else. Right? So when we're talking about evolution and the origin of life, right? even Darwin himself was talking about the, the evolution um, being the, uh, you know, the, the mechanism by which the diversity of life had come. But if you read the very last paragraph of, on the origin of species, he talks about how the first uh, organisms were breathed into by their creator and all of this evolution happened after after that, right? So, so all of this evolutionary science, this evolutionary history, um, it comes after, for the most part, the, the origin of life, Jason, right? Show me one textbook in the school, one textbook that doesn't start with the Big Bang, which is well, long Many before. of them don't start with the Big all Bang. All the biology textbooks we have in Quebec and Canada start with the Big Bang. They go through Miller's primordial soup and trying to suggest to students that somehow amino acids could form uh, proteins in water which dissolves and in heat which, which also breaks down. Uh, then the RNA somehow magically appears even though it's only in lipids, even though they only appear within living Actually, cells. Actually, it doesn't say anything about them magically appearing. And as a matter of fact, most of them don't start with the Big Bang. They start with the nature of science and the scientific method, which is pretty much limited to the physical world, even by your definition. Right exactly. Here. So the physical world shows us that RNA and lipids, fat molecules for those who don't know, RNA and lipids only show up out of living cells. They've never shown up outside. They only get created by living cells. So you're right. suggesting you're something that doesn't cells. exist, something, an environment no, that's hyper... What? That's a religious statement. You can't show me that environment in a lab. It's a religious sure. statement. Well, here's the thing. Statement. 
that's where science doesn't say, oh, we know what happened. See, science being limited to the physical world, what we can do is say, here are some things that fit with what we observe here, astronomical observations, what's going on on other planets, um, what kinds of materials do we think might have been here. Now, sure, we can't say, yes, this is exactly what happened, right? But we can come up with plausible atmospheres. We can come up with plausible things. There are a lot of Give me abiotic... a plausible atmosphere. Give me a plausible atmosphere. <laughs> Uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying here is this. I, I'm not doing this to be facetious, and I don't want to be mean on you, Jason. Uh, but the, the situation is this. DNA. DNA is the focus of life. Everything in life, I mean, this is the most complex thing on the earth. We're talking about the origin of life. We're talking about the evolution of life. You have to have a DNA code. So, okay, let's say you don't know how to get the DNA code. Let's say it just appears somehow. Okay, that makes us sort of creationist or perhaps a, a hopeful evolutionist. And then we have the DNA code. Well, where did the information come that's on the DNA code? The right. DNA code program itself? I work for Hewlett Packard. I can guarantee I've never seen a program program itself. Uh, the, there's uh, there's a ton of evidence, right? The the evidence from the fossil record um, is very uh, very compelling. It's extraordinarily compelling. Um, the evidence from uh, biochemistry is extraordinarily compelling, and it and it corroborates the fossil evidence, right? So all of the things that uh, we saw going on in the fossil record, we look now with our abilities with genetics and say, oh my goodness, yes, these things are as related as we thought they were, or in cases where we weren't exactly sure, they helped to clarify. Points against that. Secondly, you said, let's go back to the fossil record. You want to tell us, let's go for the most recent, because evolutionists like to do experimentation on bacteria that have been stable for 3.55 billion years. It's a strange thing to do experimentation on evolution on. But let's talk about monkeys to humans. Monkeys to humans supposed to be, uh, or ancestors to a chimpanzee, it would look like a chimp, uh, would be last million years. How do, you, how do you change the 250 or more differences between chimps and monkeys? Just get them walk upright. You've got to change the inner ear. You've got to change the muscular structure, the backbone, the hip, the knee, to get it walk upright. And a monkey that walks upright isn't going to be a good monkey. Isn't going to walk around the trees very well. Genetically, I'm a geneticist. Explain to me a genetic pathway to do this. Well, what we're dealing here with, uh, with here is a combination of genetics and development, right? These are things that, these, these big changes uh, that look like big changes aren't really that big changes as far as the DNA, but more uh, in development. There's a whole uh, emerging science of developmental evolution. It's, it's really a, a brilliant study. You're not on the same now, planet I yes, yes, of course I am. So, so when, you're dealing, when you're dealing with something like, um, say, uh, something that we know has come from uh, common ancestry, something like a Chihuahua versus um, a, a Great Dane, very, very, very big differences in the, uh, the, the shapes of all of these different bones, right? But it's uh, but to, the, to the eye, right? But they, but but they, they come from an, an archetype, a dog or, or wolf archetype that, that breached out. That's no problem. Creations, evolutions are, are all equal in that. What we're saying is you're not going to get from apes to humans. You're not. You What's can't the have difference a between apes to humans? To massive differences. <laughs> we got, the knees are different. Okay, they get a knee to walk upright by some miracle. It's still genetic change. Well, we have to have the inner ear to use it's it. It's still developmental yeah, change. It's still biological okay. change that Jason, we're talking about. The thing is, you do not have any example, or we do not yet have any example of new information caused by new genes. Absolutely. And if you go to talkartorigins.com and you go to TikTok,